Gaming Bolt presents 15 Reasons Why the Future of Graphics Will Be Jaw-Dropping In the tech world, there really is only one way to go, forwards. Considering that it's been barely 20 years since Quake, it's fair to say that video game tech has evolved in leaps and bounds. Whatever era you're dealing with, the desired result was often always the same, to create the best possible visuals within the constraints of existing hardware. When CDs became a viable storage medium in the 1980s, FMV games made the most of it by adding limited player interactivity to live-action sequences. It was what video games were always supposed to be about, being a part of the movie. Except, well, it really wasn't. Before Quake and the first wave of hardware 3D accelerators, games like Ultima Underworld trades horrendously low frame rates for what were, for the time, unparalleled visuals. Today though, with the consoles and PCs that are thousands of times faster, and with a new wave of consoles imminent, the possibilities for video game graphics are manifestly wider. We're going to take a look here at 15 reasons why the future of video game graphics will be nothing short of jaw-dropping. Unity 5.4 Better Visuals on Mobile Although this wasn't the case just 10 years ago, mobile is arguably the most important sector in games these days at least in terms of the revenue publishers rake in. The Unity engine was designed with a focus on scalable, performant 3D and 2D visuals on mobile platforms. Unity is ubiquitous on Android and iOS now, with everything from Dead Trigger to Shadowgun to Deus Ex The Fall running on Unity. Moreover, because it's free for commercial use, Unity became the engine of choice for indie developers on all platforms. The latest iteration, Unity 5, employs modern techniques such as physically-based rendering and volumetric lighting for some truly compelling visuals. As phones get more powerful and consoles become an increasingly indie-friendly space, expect to see mobile and indie titles with remarkable visuals in the years to come. Euclidean – Unlimited Detail Euclidean – hmm, we've heard of these guys on and off over the years. They appear to be back, however, having secured a hefty $2 million grant from the Australian government. We're going to hold our judgment on the feasibility of what's essentially a voxel-based engine, the likes of what we've seen in No Man's Sky. But for what it's worth, Euclidean's unlimited detail engine showcases some pretty remarkable visuals here. And Euclidean appears to have secured some fairly high-profile industry tie-ups. Crackdown 3 – Leveraging the Power of Azure the whole IT industry and its peripheries have seemingly been transitioning to the cloud for, well, a very long time. But obvious limitations in terms of bandwidth and universal access make that a much less straightforward transition than you'd think. But with rising high-speed internet usage, cloud streaming is slowly becoming a possibility, and one of the ways in which Microsoft intends to make up for its hardware deficit with the Xbox One. Leveraging Microsoft's enterprise-class Azure cloud infrastructure, Crackdown 3 delivers some seriously compelling physics and destructibility, thanks to its ability to offload physics calculations to Azure servers. Going into the future, games are likely to offload a variety of graphics, physics and AI tasks to the cloud, reducing the overhead on local devices, and potentially allowing for incredible leaps in visual and simulation fidelity. Ray Tracing – The Final Frontier Because of just how computationally expensive it is on regular hardware, ray tracing was the exclusive reserve of CGI movies, with the brute force grunt work done by massive server farms. PowerVR, of iPhone GPU renown, have a clever solution. Implement fixed function ray tracing hardware, specifically designed to handle ray tracing workloads. The result? mobile-class hardware that can deliver real-time ray-traced output at reasonable frame rates. If fixed-function ray-tracing hardware becomes more than just a pipe dream, and perhaps an integral part of future desktop GPUs, we could see incredible leaps in the quality of lighting, materials and shadows going forward. Unreal 4 Epic's Unreal Engine iterations have always been lookers. Unreal 1, debuting with Unreal back in the day, put Quake 2 to shame with its detailed textures. Unreal 2 brought with it advances in real-time lighting and physics, and Unreal 3 was a mainstay for the 7th gen. With Unreal 4-based AAA games already having launched, including the Return to Arkham remasters, 
we've already had a taste of what Epic's new engine will look like in games, and photorealistic visuals are finally a real possibility. Photogrammetry Remember a rather low-profile indie title called The Vanishing of Ethan Carter from a few years ago? Whatever Crytek would have you believe, that small, rather uninteractive game is arguably one of the best-looking titles ever made. This is in large part because the astronauts used a technique called photogrammetry, in which real-world objects are scanned in 3D and then placed in a game. This gives games using the technique a level of texture and model detail that artists simply cannot match. The Battlefront reboot made use of photogrammetry to spectacular effect. While it's hard to see its use in games with artwork that's not grounded in real life, photogrammetry may well see wider adoption if Battlefront is anything to go by. Dynamic Skin Microgeometry Skin is a prickly thing to render in-game, whether it's the subtle contours of the skin's surface or the way light passes through skin. Unfortunately, in-game characters are going to continue to look like plastic dolls until skin rendering gets done right. Subsurface scattering, a staple in current-gen games, simulates light transport through skin. At the end of the day, though, it's the small details that make or break visuals in the uncanny valley. New research at USC into simulating skin microgeometry offers a possible solution to render fine geometric detail on skin surfaces that would be missed through facial capture. With the introduction of lifelike skin detail, characters in-game would look that much more compelling. Physically Based Rendering PBR is one of the key visual techniques employed by 8th gen games, and by itself goes a long way towards enabling developers to create near photorealistic environments. Physically based rendering takes into account how you interact with materials in the real world, allowing for remarkably realistic surfaces, particularly metals. When combined with global illumination in a game like Assassin's Creed Unity, the results are often striking. Advanced Facial Capture Another thing holding visuals back on this side of the uncanny valley are facial expressions. The human face is capable of incredible subtlety, making it that much more difficult to represent in-game. Advanced facial capture techniques in games like L.A. Noir have taken us that much closer to lifelike faces. Ninja Theory's Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice takes things to the next level. Working together with Epic and Cube Motion, Advanced facial capture technique in Hellblade replicates all the subtleties of a motion capture actor's performance with uncanny realism. Destruction – Blowing Stuff Up 2005's Mercenaries Playground of Destruction was this writer's first brush with meaningful in-game destructibility. Mercenaries and its sequel are criminally underrated games, or maybe that's just the nostalgia talking. Nevertheless, they functionally enabled what video games are supposedly all about, blowing stuff up. The Frostbite engine remedied this with a glorious dynamic destruction model that opened up entirely new tactical options. Couldn't get into a building? Make your own door. Advanced destructibility is understandably hard to implement within a reasonable performance budget, but with ever more powerful hardware and the possibility of offloading physics to the cloud, destructibility could become integral to every shooter. Advances in Lighting Lighting effects are key to photorealistic visuals. We perceive the real world in terms of how light reflects off objects. Advances in real-time lighting, particularly dynamic GI or global illumination, together with materials that react realistically to light, courtesy PBR, can go a long way towards getting visuals up to the CGI standard. This is in many ways less of a challenge than getting facial capture and animation done right. While we might have to wait a bit longer for in-game people to look lifelike, environments already do in many cases. Post-processing To simplify things to a horrible extent, post-processing effects are like Instagram filters for your game. As the term implies, post-processing is done to a frame after it's rendered. To either enhance image quality, for example through post-processing AA techniques, or to add additional filters, like vignetting, depth of field blur, and color correction. Post-process effects have a bit of a bad rep because of the current cinematic trend to simulate how a movie camera would capture the game world, leading to an image that's often too fuzzy and soft to appreciate. On the other hand, 
advances in post-process anti-aliasing are most certainly something that everyone can appreciate. With other visual aspects becoming progressively more demanding, there's less overhead for AA. Whether you're on console or PC, Inexpensive post-process techniques like SMAA clean up image quality while still giving you sufficient performance wiggle room. Umbra and scalability. With the rise of mobile, the scalability of content has become more important than ever before. While user bases have increased drastically, the amount of power on tap varies tremendously between mobile and console or desktop platforms. Solutions like Umbra can scale visual fidelity on the fly to optimize for different performance targets. Have the headroom to max out image quality on your desktop? Go for it. Need to run the same software on your smartphone or tablet? Believe it or not, it may soon be possible. Simply Gone and LOD Scaling Unlike Euclidean, most of the normal industry models object with flat triangles. The obvious problem here is that as your level of detail and or scene complexity increase, the number of triangles on screen increases, and performance tanks. LOD, or Level of Detail Scaling Solutions like SimplyGon, solve this problem by allowing developers to make multiple LODs for a given object, with a different amount of detail based on its distance and visibility. That way, far-off objects can be rendered simply and swapped out for higher quality LODs the closer you get to them. Aggressive LOD scaling has been one of the ways developers get multi-plats up and running on the Xbox One and PS4. Dynamic LOD scaling implementations that minimize pop-up would be an interesting future development. Hardware Fizz X NVIDIA took a pretty good call snapping up the Aegea, a maker of dedicated PC physics hardware. While discrete PPUs are a non-starter these days, NVIDIA's commitment to hardware PhysX and its wider GameWorks implementations have meant that gamers with NVIDIA hardware have benefited from, well, extra shiny visuals, though at a cost to performance. With high-profile games like The Witcher 3 making use of PhysX and GameWorks functionality, and with NVIDIA's dominant position in the GPU market, we wouldn't be surprised if a wider selection of games got hardware physics support. And that wraps it up. What are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it on Twitter and Facebook. And why not consider subscribing? We upload some really cool videos almost every day. Thank you for watching this video and happy gaming.